So I just finished writing an article about um, chronobacter bacteria because that's been coming up in the news a lot lately. It's partly responsible for some of those formula recalls and things like that. And you are um, an infant feeding specialist. You're a registered dietitian with um, experience um, working with delicate ba babies in the NICU, correct? And so um, I just wanted to kind of get some of your input about this topic and um, see what you might have to tell us about it. So would you just start by kind of introducing yourself and, and, and why you have this level of expertise uh, and then maybe tell us a little bit about the bacteria and what to do. Sure. Um, so my, I'm Janelle. I'm a registered dietitian. I've been a dietitian for about 16 years and worked in the NICU um, in the children's hospital, had babies of my own. So anytime that we see something like what's been in the news with the formula recalls and the chronobacters, very concerning um, because nobody wants to have a sick baby. Um, so, you know, I think definitely you have to take the steps to have a, a clean area to work with at home um having clean if uh, of course you know the the chronobacter is um can be um in and the, the formulas that were recalled in the powdered formula so if you can use the liquid version or in uh, breastfeed um that reduces the risk significantly, especially direct breastfeeding. Um, but there are those instances where you have to use powdered formula. So we want to do it as safe as possible. Um, so anything that comes in contact with the formula, um, we want to make sure that it is uh, washed, rinsed, uh, sanitized, sterilized, all of those steps to kill any bacteria that, that might be looming there. Um, so you know, definitely go that extra mile, make sure that you're sterilizing bottles, nipples. Um, every time that you get a new can of formula, use the new scoop that's on there. Um, make sure that you're washing your hands before preparing any formula and then have that designated spot um, in your kitchen where you prepare formula every time and you know that that's the spot that you wipe down and that you clean every single time. Okay, that's interesting. So don't don't just mix up formula wherever. <laughs> Make sure it's a clean and sanitized spot. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Um, you can find some information on the CDC website about um, heating the water up to kill any bacteria that uh, could potentially be um, in the formula. Um, you can read all the steps on the CDC website to kind of... Um, and, and you might find some information on your own, but just to clarify a little bit, we don't want to ever add boiling water straight to the formula. So um, we do want to get that water to a boiling temperature and then let it cool down, um, usually to about 175. So having a, a, temp a thermometer there that you can uh, keep track of the temperature um, and then mixing the formula up that way because um, especially chronobacter, it can't survive that temperature of 175. So um, it would kill it off. Now, if you had any formula that was recalled and you know that it's been recalled, don't try it with that. <laughs> Definitely, um, you know, send that away, throw that away. Um, but if you're just kind of on, maybe you have um, an immunocompromised baby or a, a newborn and you're just wanting to go that extra mile, that would be something that you could do as well. Just just to give you some peace of mind. I see. And so you don't want to put that boiling water straight onto the formula because why? Correct. Um, so there are some nutrients in there that can be broken down um, with boiling temperatures, like the protein, some of the B vitamins. Um, so we do want to let it cool down just a, a little bit to about 175. Um, but we don't want that to go below 158 because um, that's when the chronobacter can still stay alive. We want to get to that temperature where it can kill kill any of the bacteria. I see. So boil it, let it get down to around 175, and but not below 158. And then, <clears throat> and then is it is it is it a good temperature to go ahead and feed your baby at that no. point? <laughs> Absolutely not. So we would want to let that cool down um, to about room temperature. Um, I always did the wrist test, you know, make sure that it feels comfortable to, to your body temp before you feed the baby. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Good to and know. you could make a day's worth of bottles with that too if you put them in the fridge. Okay, so you don't have to do that every time. Correct, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we also want to limit, um, if you're feeding your baby formula and they didn't finish all of the formula, don't try to reheat that or use it again. Um, definitely discard that because there is bacteria in the baby's saliva, there's bacteria in the air and it can get introduced into the bottle. Um, okay. So I know formula is expensive and we don't want to waste it, but it's not worth having a sick baby. So not chronobacter, but other stuff, because there's Anything. other stuff out there, Actually, right? There's so many germs, um, not just chronobacter. And we should always be cleaning and sterilizing for all germs, not just for chronobacter. Okay. Um, all right. That is a, real, a lot of really good information, Janelle. Thank you so much. Thank you.